in that book, I did write about the housing bubble and why I believed it was going to burst or why I believed there was a bubble. You were and right on the leading edge of that. It's going to become much worse. They gave it their best shot, Lauren. Remember they had Larry, the brilliant Summers, as the head of the economic team? Remember the stimulus programs? Remember under Bush TARP? They've given it everything they can, and they're coming up with goose eggs. So we're, not, we're only going to see it get much worse. After 42 years of tyrannical rule, Colonel Gaddafi is dead. Britain's secret friend. Tonight, how we colluded with him to kidnap Gaddafi's opponents around the world. Among the international businessmen and the jet-setting playboys is this man, Musa Kusa. He was one of Colonel Gaddafi's inner circle, a ruthless spy chief trusted with the security of the country and stamping out dissent. When he fled Libya at the start of the uprising, he chose to defect to Britain. Musa Kusa is responsible for the death of 270 innocent civilians, as well as thousands of his own people as part of the Gaddafi regime. Musa Kusa is the guardian of many of Libya's secrets. So why, with little explanation, did Britain let him go? Central Bank floated the idea of dumping the greenback as the world's reserve currency, replacing it with an international currency. Thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. His vision for America's place in a new world order. After Tripoli fell, his old offices were abandoned and torched, but some documents survived. They exposed Libya's secret relationship with the UK in a series of letters between Musa Kusa and MI6. These documents are absolutely extraordinary. They show the, the real detail of the secret relationship between Britain and America and Gaddafi's police state. And what really is amazing is the tone of them, the, the friendliness. They're cosy and smug at some stages. And tonight, we can show that Britain's friend, Musa Kusa, was attached to the bloodiest massacre of Gaddafi's regime. When we searched former intelligence offices bombed out by NATO, we managed to salvage some of the regime's surveillance tapes. We heard screams and beatings, and from 11 to 1.30 we heard continuous shooting. We didn't know what happened exactly, and how many were killed. We didn't guess that they killed just about everyone. More than 1,200 inmates were slaughtered that day. It took nearly three hours. Abdul Ati only survived because he was hidden by a sympathetic guard. Now Panorama can reveal that one of the regime's inner circle, present as the massacre unfolded, was Musa Kusa at the time, Chief of Spies. The man the UK made deals with over rendition and who gave assurances there'd be no torture had actually tortured people himself. He crossed the border into Tunisia and then on to a country he trusted with whom he'd done grubby business before, the UK. He arrived by private jet at Farnborough Air Base and was then whisked off to a safe house. He was protected by special branch officers and agreed to be interviewed briefly by Lockerbie investigators. His assets in the West were unfrozen. Now he could tap into his significant wealth. According to some, it's about protecting civilians. We must not tolerate this regime using military force against its own people. But some are convinced intervention in Libya is all about currency, specifically Gaddafi's plan to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold, a true sharing of the wealth. It's one of these things that you have to plan almost in secret, because as soon as you say you're going to change over from the dollar to the something else, you're going to be targeted. There were two conferences on this. 
one in uh, 96 and another one in the year 2000 called the World Mataba Conference organized by Gaddafi. And uh, everybody was interested and I think most countries in Africa were keen. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. The UK has double that, but 10 times the population. It's happened before. In 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed. Some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring oil trading in all its member countries to the euro. Terrorism through proxies. Either Syrians mm -hmm. living in Syria or foreigner fighters coming from abroad. So it's a new style of war. This is first. So you have to adapt with this new style. It takes time. It's not easy. Okay. And to say this is easy, as easy as a normal or let's say traditional or regular war, no. It's much more difficult. Second, the support that they've been had, that's been offered to those terrorists in every aspect, armaments, money, political, is unprecedented. So you have to expect that it's going to be tough war and difficult war. You don't, say, you don't expect a small country like Syria to defeat all those countries that have been fighting us through proxies just in days or weeks changing laws in favor of the banks, and he's not doing anything to stop the banks. He's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under Bush. So, in fact, he's just a continuation of Bush on the subject of markets and finance, which is the most important part of his policy right now. People who voted for Obama wanted real change and are getting platitudes, are getting a lot of nice talk, but nothing in the, in the way of concrete change is taking place. In this town, business as usual. Returning vets could be a risk to our nation. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance. I think the new world order is emerging. This is a hoax and a scam which is designed to transfer wealth and power from the private sector to the government sector and from the government of the United States to a world government. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy government. Conspiracy theorists. They conspiracy, they've been crazy, but now they they're right. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. They tell us who they are. No. You know, financial terrorism. They have the ability to tweak the knob. I am proposing that the Federal Reserve be granted new authority. The ultimate goal of the carbon tax and the cap and trade is to destroy production. This energy tax is the largest tax increase in American history. We're actually creating a global warming police. So number one, they can come in, the federal government can come in, inspect your house, and send you the bill. We're setting up a global warming Gestapo. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. President Obama today proposed something new, something called prolonged detention. Pre-crime is where people are arrested and incarcerated to prevent crimes that they have not yet committed. You know, a very sharp guy, very smooth, knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, for that reason, far more dangerous than Bush. <laughs> Make a prediction because a lot of people are saying that QE3 is coming next month. Do you predict we're going to see that? You know, I don't know if they're going to call it QE3 or some other kind of scheme, but they have to do something to keep pumping money into the system. Look, Lauren, we found out because of the reporting that went on, we just found out two years ago, that the, U the Federal Reserve was pumping, what, $1.2 trillion into the banks around the world that we didn't know about? They're mm -hmm. going to do something. And that's why gold prices are going up. Well, we, look, we know that, the, the, uh, that Washington is talking about more austerity measures, the same kind of austerity measures that are, are racking through Europe as well. What does that mean? 
it means more cutbacks. So at a time when the economy is already slowing down, they created, as you pointed out, zero job. So what it shows us is that at a time when things are slowing down, it's going to become much worse. They gave it their best shot, Lauren. Remember they had Larry, the brilliant Summers, as the head of the economic team? Remember the stimulus programs? Remember under Bush TARP? They've given it everything they can, and they're coming up with goose eggs. So we're, not, we're only going to see it get much worse. The Fed, they are, they're in this thing all the way around. And yet, you want to talk about powerful people, you've got a majority of congressmen that are willing to say, we need to open up the books of the Fed. You can't even get this thing brought to the floor now. Why is that? They're not going to give up. They're going to move all these shenanigans over to the IMF. They're going to have a world organization. So the powerful elite then will have a world currency. That's what they're being uh, plan, planning for right now. So uh, we, we as a people really have to wake up. My effort is exposing the Fed, opening up the books. The American people want it, and we have both Republicans and Democrats demanding it. But you made the right point. How are we going to get the leadership to do what the American people are demanding? How much time do we have, Ron? which means the next shoe is the crisis in the dollar, the value of the dollar, not just the financial system. Okay. We will see high, high inflation rates soon. Okay. Uh, Congressman Ron Paul, thank you very much, sir.